The introduction of the MP3 file and file sharing services just after the year 2000 changed the landscape of the music business. Recently at Brock University, a panel of music industry professionals gathered to discuss these changes, and it's clear that to them, music matters. One of the things we have to understand is that we pay musicians to feel and to express things that we are unable, because we are not artists. That ability to feel and express those feelings is worth money, is worth compensation. So if we want to have people who are going to continue to feel and who are going to devote their lives to feeling and expressing these feelings and to making you feel good, that's worth something. Is it a moral issue, an ethical issue? It's a moral issue, it's an economic issue, it's, uh, it's, it's everything. I mean, you wouldn't walk into a grocery store and steal a head of lettuce, would you? Because that's immoral, that's wrong. Music Matters was the brainchild of associate professor of marketing, Todd Green, who teaches a class on ethics. I teach marketing and we're often looking at how things are shifting, so quite often we talk about social media and, and, and things like that. So. The big shift from music in the physical format to digital is something that I've been able to bring up. Um, in the past when I used to teach marketing ethics, I used to ask my students, so you don't typically go and steal art from an art gallery, why is music different? So it, it has fit in nicely with what I teach and then also with my research as well. What are you hoping to see come out of tonight's event? Um, well, hopefully some entertainment, I guess, of course, for the, the people who are coming. Um, a wide variety of opinions because they're all in different roles and they've held a number of different roles. Um, and also, I guess, I would like to see people be encouraged to go into the music industry. So one thing we'll talk about is why should a young person go into the industry and why should someone who's in it now, why should they stay? Eric Alper is one panel member who is excited about the new way of doing business. You know, we used to talk about when the internet was first happening that it was going to be a level playing field. And what it's done is, it's done that, which has been great for bands who don't want to have a record label or, or can't get a record deal or a distribution deal. They don't need it. They can go and record a song in their bedroom. By Friday, they can do a really cool video. By Sunday, they can have 100,000 views and then all of a sudden be in Rolling Stone magazine as a hot band. And then Tuesday, they're kind of forgotten about. And that's that new cycle of it. But, you know, that level playing field also has this bad side where if you're a band in St. Catharines, your competition is another band in St. Catharines. Your competition is now Bruce Springsteen. Your competition is now Madonna's new album. Your competition is Kendrick Lamar. So at that point, it's the entire world is all fighting for the same ears and the same eyeballs as everybody else out there, which is great where only the best music will actually make it to the top and survive. When the Canadian music industry gathered in Hamilton recently for the Junos, much of the discussion was similar to tonight's. The, the mood has been about the same over the last 15 years. It's just like, I don't, we really like what we're doing. We really enjoy this business of making and music and the star making machinery and all the rest of it. But, uh, you know, it used to be so much better. These students that are, will be in the audience tonight, these university mm -hmm. students who have grown up in the internet age, grown up with free access mm -hmm. to music, mm -hmm. how do we convince them that they do need to pay for it? Well, they need to pay for something. I think we're moving into the era where you at least have to have a token payment, even if it's 10 bucks a month to a streaming service, to have legal and legal access to, to, to music. Reporting at Brock University for The Source, I'm Mike Balsam.